Hey everybody, I'm Jason, and in this episode of Control Issues, we'll be taking a look at a project I call Death Grip. So I woke up one morning wanting to build a giant robotic death grip claw arm, as one does. While this build in its totality may not be completely practical for a lot of people and a lot of purposes, it does contain uh, strokes of practicality within it, uh, ideas that you can use for your projects. I started off wanting to uh, make the gauntlet to go around my forearm, so I went ahead and used some of these angled pattern brackets and our new pattern plates uh, to go along the sides of the uh, forearm gauntlet. Um, I knew I wanted to open and close the claws uh, in some fashion and decided I wanted to go the route of using a homemade linear actuator to do so. If it was for practicality, you'd probably want uh, two, one on each side, but I kind of liked the aesthetic of having the asymmetric setup of having the linear actuator running on one side and the giant gears, which I've been dying to use, um, mating with each other to open and close it. The assembly that I have traveling up and down the lead screw is a little bit heavier duty than I really need. I wanted to show a setup like this in case you did need more stability or more strength as you're running something up and down your lead screw. Um, the trick to making uh, a dual lead screw nut setup work is having them uh, clamped uh, together. So these two clamping hubs are clamping onto these hub spacers and that's kind of the key because I can loosen this one here and rotate this just a little bit one way or the other which will move it a little bit further or a little bit closer to the other one and until you get the spacing just right. Um, so I did that before this was all attached to anything else and then you go ahead and you do the drop test where you you pick it up and you let go and you see if just gravity alone will uh, pull the assembly along the lead screw. So similar to how I use the 770 pattern uh, 90 degree mounts in combination with the dual ball bearing hubs for the linear actuator uh, push arm to open and close one of the fingers here, I use this very similar setup on the front to actually mount the fingers to some X-rail. And I actually put a bushing in there for spacing so I could reach in with the 764 hex key to to get to the screws that are securing it down to the X-Rail. Um, and this gave me plenty of rotation capability um, and clearance to, to rotate around. And the best part is um, it allowed me to use these 128 tooth hub mount uh, spur gears and mounting them uh, using, utilizing the X-Rail in that way allows me to use them together because otherwise um, the the spacing wouldn't work out if you're mounting these along uh, channels. So that's, um, you can make the spacing exactly what you need on, on X-Rail 8020 and extrusions like that. Um, but the if you're doing it along channel, um, you need to make the math work out. So 128 plus 128 isn't divisible by 48, which it would need to do if you wanted these to mate properly with each other. So when you have an assembly on a single lead screw, it'll have a tendency to want to rotate, of course, because the lead screw is rotating. And I didn't want to have it rotate around, around the lead screw. And so although I could have gone with various different ways to connect from this traveling assembly to one of the fingers of the claw, um, I went with dual ball bearing hubs because they're very strong and I know that this particular setup is going to restrict rotation of that so it's only moving along one plane um, and so if you went with something else like for example a ball linkage with a threaded rod connecting them that would allow rotation um, more so than you really want and this uh, traveling assembly would twist and, and hit this uh, pattern plate along here. I have a nice heavy duty trigger in way of a aluminum beam. This beam is supported by a pill block and ultimately turning a potentiometer. That potentiometer is being monitored by an Arduino Uno compatible SparkFun breadboard. So besides monitoring the potentiometer to tell exactly where the trigger is at, the Arduino is also monitoring the data from the encoder on the motor 
as well as the data from the two sensors. Um, not to mention the fact that it's sending information to this Plulu simple motor controller to actually drive the motor since an Arduino Uno by itself is not powerful enough to drive a motor. So you're going to need some sort of motor controller. Uh, in this case, I went with an external one instead of a, a motor controller shield. Um, I've used this one in previous projects and really like it. It's simple and easy to use and runs these motors really well. Um, the sensors I refer to are Hall effect sensors. They're sensing when a magnet enters uh, their field. And if you've watched our How Encoders Work video, you can see where we've used these sensors before and talk about a little bit how they work. Um, ultimately, when you first turn this project on, it will rotate the motor slowly in one particular direction until it hits one of those sensors and then it knows where that first endpoint is and it records the data from the encoder at that particular position and then it reverses direction until it hits the other sensor and records that particular location via the encoder and then it's able to map the sweep of your potentiometer to your your beginning and end points um, based on your encoder feedback. So at any given point after that uh, initial um, calibration sequence that occurs when you first turn it on, after that, anywhere you move that uh, potentiometer, anywhere you move that trigger, it's gonna find, it's gonna immediately figure out where it should be along the stroke and move the motor until it gets to that location. So while I did have costuming, cosplay, and Halloween in mind while I built this project, that's not to say that it's completely without capability. Um, it actually does a pretty good job, um, especially because you have very proportional fine grain control. While you may not build one just like this, you might be able to glean some ideas from certain parts of it. So we're going to head and post an Instructables uh, with at least the wiring diagrams and code and probably some of the highlights of the parts list to, to show you exactly how we put this together. Thank you.